Starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I know it's April Fools, but we take ourselves very seriously here. April Fools. For our history segment today, we will head to 1930s Manitouche waters and learn about one of the most harrowing fires in Wisconsin history. We'll get to all of that in a bit, but first, here's your top four at four. With the state mask mandate struck down, some local mandates have popped up today. This includes Portage County, home of Stevens Point and Plover, Bayfield and Ashland counties to the northwest of us. They also have mask mandates. Merrill's mayor, Derek Wellner, declared a face mask requirement in city-owned buildings. So that would mean City Hall, Fire Department, the Rec Center, and places like that. And just remember, many stores still have mask requirements of their own. The National Autobahn Society plans to restore nearly 300,000 acres of Great Lakes coastal wetlands. Climate change, development, and invasive species are threatening coastal areas of the Great Lakes region that is home to 350 bird species. Great Lakes Autobahn has identified 12 regions for protection and restoration to benefit 14 marsh bird species that have been on the decline. The work will include 10 projects in the Green Bay and Twin Ports area. Twin Ports is the Duluth and Superior part of Wisconsin and Minnesota. The plan depends on federal aid from the Great Lakes Cleanup Program and state aid from the Knowles Nelson Stewardship Fund. Oneida County voters face two referendums on the April ballot, so let's talk about them a little bit. The first question is binding. It asks whether property taxes should be raised to pay for improvements on county roads and bridges. Oneida County Board Member Stephen Trier urges people to vote no. He believes the $6.9 million from the American Rescue Plan may be able to cover the costs. Meanwhile, Board Member Ted Cushing urges people to vote yes. He says it's unclear whether those funds from the American Rescue Plan can go toward infrastructure. We'll have more on this tonight at 5. And by the way, the second question on that ballot is non-biting. It asks residents if they want the city to cut $500,000 in programs from the operating budget. No specific programs are named yet. This Saturday, you can choose to celebrate Easter a little early in Mercer. The Lions Club there is hosting their annual Easter egg hunt at the Carroll Park Pavilion. There will be family fun and egg hunt. Obviously, prizes, hot dogs, sloppy joes, and treats. The entire event is free. The celebration starts at 11 a.m. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Weller joins us now. Jeff, happy Thursday. Hey, Dan, happy Thursday. We are in can you find a cloud out there mode today. Lots of clear skies across the area and thus lots of sunshine. Temperatures are like in that sunshine with highs today back in the 30s and 40s, uh, but 50s are not too far away, followed by 60s over Easter weekend this year. Right now it's 38 in Rhinelander with a calm wind there. That's been change, right? And a dew point, very dry air at 7. Over in in Wausau, 39 for you, a calm wind as well, and a dew point there of 10. So again, very dry air in place across our region right now. And temperatures are doing all right, so better, of course, than yesterday, but still below average. But that's going to change shortly as we have some much warmer air on the way. Remember yesterday I was talking about watch the west of us, right? We'll get some warmer air developing across Kansas. Well, look what happened today. 60s out there now, even some 70s, and those are going to move in our direction. We're probably not going to do 70, but 60s are for sure in our forecast uh, beginning as soon as Saturday. Here's the averages. 45 is the average high, low 24. 11 below is what the atmosphere can do this time of year still, although that's not in our forecast anytime soon with the sunset there at 726 in the afternoon. Going forward though, so 51 tomorrow, we'll take it. Plenty of sunshine, 65 for Saturday, and look what happens. We stay there for a while. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all in the 60s, maybe back in the 50s next week on Thursday. If you are sniffling or have uh, watery eyes or red eyes, the tree pollen is just beginning to register now on the charts. Uh, grass, weed, and mold is still doing just fine, uh, but tree pollen season, here it comes. Looking outside now, lots of clear skies across the state. Now continue tonight into tomorrow. It's going to be a cold night once again tonight uh, as we have Arctic air kind of close by, but look at all the high pressure across the west of us right now. That is going to give us a beautiful weekend in early parts of next week. So your forecast then for tonight, though, is partly cloudy skies to mostly clear skies. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what's that? Dan, what is that? Oh. Dan. Oh, no. Ah!
This portion of News Watch 12 is brought to you by Furniture and Appliance Mart. Tomahawk Sports Center is Northern Wisconsin's one-stop shop for UTVs, ATVs, snowmobiles, boats and motors, watercraft, docks and waterfront equipment. See our tremendous deals now on the LumaCraft boats, engineered for optimal lift, strength and fuel economy, resulting in a softer, quieter and drier ride. We are a family-run business with a long history of personal service before and after the sale. Tomahawk Sports Center services all of our products and others with our full-service service department. Head to Tomahawk Sports Center now for great deals on the LumaCraft boats. Experience Lee Ayers Jewelers in downtown Stevens Point. Their store was founded on the principles of personal service, quality, and value. Their gallery displays a wide variety of diamond bridal, custom creations, and colored gemstones. They have three in-store goldsmiths. Thomas Daling, a nationally recognized jewelry designer. Greg Austin, jewelry designer and goldsmith. And Dan Zier, a master of repair. For all of your jewelry needs, visit Lee Ayers Jewelers in downtown Stevens Point. Kids learn from our example. So what would they learn from Deb Kerr? Kerr covered up a school financial scandal. Her employee overdrew the school's account by half a million dollars. Instead of firing him, she paid him on leave for a year, then lied to get him another job, saying, quote, he's a good steward of public funds. Honesty and integrity are important for our schools. Vote to show our kids a good example. The new LDF Country Market in Lac de Flambeau offers families the freshest meats, produce, bakery, and groceries. Take a closer look and you'll find a smoke shop, beer cave, deli, and liquor all under one roof with convenient fueling stations just outside. Add Native American arts and crafts and you'll enjoy a unique, spacious shopping experience found nowhere else. Shop the new LDF Country Market today. Get what you need so you can get back to what you enjoy. Sadly, I have to announce that our own chief meteorologist, Jeff Weller, was unceremoniously eaten by a hodag just two minutes ago. The Newswatch 12 team is sad. We already miss him and his leadership. We are also looking for a new chief meteorologist. So if you know of any meteorologists that would be interested, they will try to fill a hole that was left by the late, great Jeff Weller. So if you were saying, go on. April Fools. You're supposed to say <laughs> April Fools as you April Fools. The whole day let me go. That's Everybody. good. How did you escape? Uh, I ran really fast. Good. So that worked. Uh, I was yeah, he entire... looked like he had you cornered there. Uh, he did. I escaped, though. I ran track in high school, so I got away fast. Good for you. Okay, mm -hmm. so remember Peeps yesterday, Jeff? Yes. I have a picture for us to look at. What is this? It's kind of a pun. Uh, that's a peep in, next to the coffee mug. Right. Peeping. It's kind of, oh, there you go. A peeping peep. -er? It's a peep and peep. It's a peep and peep. Oh, exactly. Okay. Got it. So, Jeff, we have this intro. It's of us water skiing, and a viewer sent mm -hmm. us an email regarding this intro. So let's let's just take a look at it. So we kind of have a refresher here. So you're driving the boat. You got Theo. You got me. Mm -hmm. So the idea is is a viewer sent us in. Thank you for the email, and that we were not following proper water skiing. Um, regulations. The viewer says we broke some rules. However, but I will say he's incorrect. If you look at a 2017 law, we have a picture of a Wisconsin Public Radio article that says water skiers no longer need spotters in Wisconsin under a bill that passed in 2017. All you need, all you need is a good rear view mirror and we have that Jeff we had that in the boat we did have that and also just for giggles here too um, one of our creative services people was also in the boat with us this is we true. edited them out so we wouldn't see them this is true. we kind of blinded them but uh, they were also in the boat too I'm just so elated to see you again I thought you were gone <laughs> Dana, you know I can't get you had a whole this. in memorium segment there for me yeah that, it was that uh, weird to look at that yeah, did you feel like you were kind of like watching your own funeral? You know, or I was just like taking that? in the nice things you were saying about me. That oh. made me feel yeah, good. There, there it is. In the, there it is there, again. So that, if you oh, ever there's a graveyard in the background. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. There's a, a color picture on your uh, grave. That's a nice That's modern a nice, touch. Can you do that nowadays? I think you can. I'm sure you can. I think you can. Okay. You can have a colored picture on your, you know, granite gravestone these days. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe another segment will design your own gravestones. That would be a really uplifting piece. You I think, think people would like that? 
I don't know. Well, we'll we'll go to the workshop on that one. We'll think about that. Remember, we tomorrow's mojitos. Do you have to go to break? We're gonna go to mojitos in an acai bowl tomorrow. But first, we're gonna head up to Manitouish Waters and learn about the Powell Marsh Fire in just a few minutes. Nine ninety five at my age. Nine ninety five. No way. Nine ninety five. That's impossible. Hi. I'm Jonathan, a manager here at Colonial Penn Life Insurance Company, to tell you it is possible. If you're age 50 to 85, you can get life insurance with options starting at just $9.95 a month. Okay, Jonathan, I'm listening. Tell me more. Just $9.95 a month for Colonial Penn's number one most popular whole life insurance plan. There are no health questions to answer and there are no medical exams to take. Your acceptance is guaranteed. You can't be turned down because of your health, even if you have health problems or take medication. Guaranteed acceptance? I like guarantees. Keep going. And with this plan, your rate is locked in for your lifetime, so it will never go up. Perfect if you're on a fixed budget. Sounds good to me, but at my age, I need the security of knowing it won't get canceled as I get older. This is lifetime coverage, as long as you pay your premiums. It can never be canceled. So, you get lifetime security. And, for extra peace of mind, you also have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So don't wait. Call now for free information. You'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record your important information and give helpful direction about your final wishes to your loved ones. And it's yours free. It's our way of saying thank you just for calling. So call now. Don't wait. Operators are standing by. Call now for free information and your free gift. Call 1-800-974-1649. 1-800-974-1649. Take the first step and lock in your lifetime rate for just $9.95 a month. Call 1-800-974-1649. 1-800-974-1649. Call now. Welcome back to Up North at Four. I'm now joined by Jim Boker from the Manitouish Waters Historical Society. Jim, how are you doing? Doing well, Dan. Thank you. It is fire season right now. There's been a lot of wildfires going on around the state. And today we're going to talk about a very, very big fire from many years ago, the Powell Marsh Fire. So let's hear about that. Yes. Um, sadly, many communities like Manitouish Waters have forest fire stories spanning over a century. And as we enter into uh, fire season, it's uh, to keep us mindful, to be careful, to be thankful for our first responders, and also for timely rains like we've enjoyed the last few days. But when drought comes, problems follow. And the Powell Marsh Fire actually burned for two years, 1933 through 1934. And uh, that's because it was a peat fire. And we'll talk about how the peat can burn in these swamps. But when you think about the 1930s, in 1933 to 1934, you think of drought. And most people think dust storms, which was really the case in the uh, southwestern part of the state and uh, throughout the breadbasket of America. But when you think about drought in the Northwoods, you should think about fire. We got a really good image of uh, forest fires near Manitouish in 1933, and you just see the smoke billowing up in front of a farmstead, threatening basically all the communities up to the UP. So we're going to follow this Powell Marsh fire, and it's over year-long um, challenge to the Northwoods. Well, every fire has to have a story for how it started, and we're getting most of our information from a colorful a member of our community, Carl Christensen, and we'll be talking about Carl a lot, but he said they were going to heat up a cup of coffee or something with a little campfire, and they started this fire. And like I said, it burned over a year. We have an image of Carl Christensen on the right, and it's a famous image that you'll find out about when you talk to Kay Kranz in a few weeks. But Carl was also an expert in the use of dynamite, and this will prove very helpful in battling the fire on Powell Marsh. I have a map that's included that uh, is from about 1917, 
and it shows a yellow line marking where the fire line was and a green, red, and blue arrow that will follow throughout the presentation that'll show you where Carl Christensen took a stand against his fire in 1933. We're gonna start with the green arrow and the Civilian Conservation Corps at Camp Mercer was right in the area. And Carl talks about the tank sprayers that uh, the CCC boys wore on their bank, back and he was very critical in helping them fill those tanks and battle this fire. Um, if you look at the DNR slide that was shared with us, you see a ranger unloading a bunch of CCC men, and there's a yellow arrow pointing at a tank, and that's one of those squirt tanks. He has uh, the squirting nozzle on the top of the tank. The tank is down below his waist, and he's hauling that heavy tank out into the fire itself. They were also using other tools like axes and shovels. They even have a bulldozer. So they have a lot of equipment to battle this because it was pretty nasty. But what Carl said is once they got out on the Powell Marsh with those squirt tanks, we're in a drought and the water isn't there. So uh, he had the CCC boys dig a hole six feet down. He packed it with dynamite because he was trained in dynamite demolition he detonates it and makes this giant crater. So that's exciting in its own right. But beyond that, just think about these boys. Now they're not only fighting a fire, running across marsh and marsh grass, they got to jump down into this hole, which is all basically peat and mud. And they got to fill their tanks, run up the hole, and then go back in the fire. And this is their, their day, their weeks going forward. So it gives you some uh, appreciation of the intensity of the fighting. And then, you know, using those tractors and shovels and other tools, the CCC boys and others held this fire line um, at that first arrow. If you take a look at uh, the big orange arrow uh, on one of the maps I have, it shows where uh, the fire largely was. All the yellow arrows from Lac de Flambeau to Mercer, Winchester, Presque Isle joined in in Manitouish waters. And the red box along the Manitouish River, that's where... Camp Mercer is in these CCC boys. They marshaled a total of six to 700 men to battle this fire for weeks on end as it threatened the communities. I think RVA is doing an excellent job of preparing the kids for college. My daughter, who's a junior, is gonna start college classes and she could graduate with almost a full associate's degree. I think the one thing that people should know about RVA is how well-rounded it is with all the extra things that they can do, not only through school, but through student council and National Honor Society. The teachers are the best, and the students in RVA are really helpful. I think it's a great program. We need to know what happened on that flight. My God. What if the truth is impossible to believe? You want answers. Welcome to Eureka. Liv! The Law & Order crossover event, tonight on NBC. Everyone sleeps at Tomahawk Furniture & Gun with prices so low you'll have to bend over to see them. Prices that make your eyes pop out. Want to sleep watching TV? Check out our recliners. You want to pass up face first in a sofa? Check out our sofas. And beds. We've got beds. Check us out. Price is so low you'll think we're crazy. Because everyone sleeps at Tomahawk Furniture and Gun. Add comfort and style to your home with help from Menards. Find your style with Patriot Lighting Ceiling Fans. Menards has a huge in-store selection for you to choose from, like this LED Ogin Ceiling Fan. It comes with a remote, and you can easily change the color temperature with the flip of a switch. Get 11% off all Patriot Lighting Ceiling Fans. Save big money and get 11% off everything at Menards. Save big money at Menards. As we move to the next uh, battle point, we're gonna be looking at the red arrow along the canal. There's an interesting canal that was built by the uh, Southgate Estate, and actually that great property will burn in this fire and be largely destroyed. But you can see a picture of the canal and the yellow arrows show where the canal is. So Christensen was charged with taking care of that canal 
a local leader, George Laporte, said we need to get water in that canal so they could use their lift pumps and try to hold a fire line. Well, what happens next is a series of calamities because as uh, they were keeping the canal cleared, they weren't observing the area around them. And Carl Christensen and a helper from up in Presque Isle were surrounded by fire, cut off from the rest and trapped. The fire created its own wind at that point, and he stood behind pine trees that acted like rocks in a river and created an eddy for them to breathe. But I mean, this is not a long-term strategy to survive a forest fire. You're going to die. So they literally run to the closest lake. They dig a hole down on the edge of the lake, and they go full muskrat and go under the bank, wetting their handkerchiefs and the fire rolls right over them and they survive. When they come up, the fire is burning in front of them and their family members, Christensen's wife, they all thought that they were dead. They actually survived, came back, regrouped, and of course they went on to fight the fire again. And now we're at the Blue Arrow over by Swamp Lake or Ike Walton Lake, here fighting side by side with Lacta Flambo firefighters they were trying to stop again the fire from uh, moving into the communities of Boulder Junction and, um, and Manitouish Waters and Lac de Flambeau as well. This was such a fierce fire and uh, was really quite notorious for a long time. And as you can see in the newspaper articles, you know, they document six to 700 men were battling that Powell Marsh fire in 1933. And the fire was so devastating and many couldn't really handle the pressure. It's like post-traumatic stress. And uh, we see from a news article that eight of the CCC enrollees refused to fight the fire because of the danger and the peril. And instead they spent 30 days in the jail in Iron County. And uh, it kind of gives you an understanding of what our first responders face when they try to protect us in our communities. It is really a challenging, challenging, heroic effort. So some really do argue that this peat fire, as it says in the article that I have highlighted for 1934, drove the fire feet down into the peat moss and stayed there all winter burned and smoldered and come spring it resurrected again now this is going to be a smaller fire but uh, the ccc boys will actually fight this one again and uh, dug miles of trenches and uh, and ditches in powell marsh to try to mitigate that we have pictures of the fire billowing up over the manitowish waters uh over uh, the manitowish river uh at camp mercer uh, and they fought that for, again, weeks and weeks and weeks. And again, in the Mercer Monitor newspaper, they still reference that those peat fires were the absolute worst. This smaller fire in 1934, Camp Mercer alone put 36,000 man hours in suppressing this fire. So again, showing you the scale and effort to protect the properties of the Northwoods. And uh, that fire season in spring, we have some nice pictures of them holding an active fire line with burning trees. And those are actually Camp Mercer and Rollies on the Palm Marsh fire and the burnover after effect. Importantly, the CCC boys will start to build fire towers, fire lanes and telephone communications and start to create a more centralized network that could reach out throughout the North Woods and suppress fires and protect our communities. So that's the Powell Marsh fire. Jim, you really transported me to like a war. Like I felt like this is a war with multiple battles. I've never kind of heard of firefighting from that perspective. So thanks so much for joining us to talk about the Powell Marsh fire. You bet. <laughs> Northland Basement Systems is the all-things basementy company. Basement waterproofing, basement finishing, basement structural repair, humidity and mold control, and nasty crawl spaces too. 
When it comes to basement solutions, nobody does it better than we do. Since 1991, homeowners just like you in the Northland have trusted Northland Basement Systems for all things basementy in their homes. Call Northland Basement Systems today to schedule a free home evaluation. Eliminate cold, uncomfortable drafts this winter with high-performance windows that insulate like walls. I'm talking about the Eco Sky Window exclusively from us here at Mad City Windows. Specially engineered for cold climates for maximum weather protection. Listen to this. They're 114% more airtight than your average vinyl window only from us Mad City Windows. Remember Mad City, Wisconsin's number one remodeler. And now you can take advantage of the 60-60-60 sale. 60% 60 off installation, 60 months zero interest, senior military and previous customer discounts, $60 Walmart gift card with purchase. Call during this program and receive a free $100 Amazon gift card with estimate. Call 715-690-3085. Let me give you that number again. 715-690-3085. Be sure to ask about Mad City's Do More discount. Get additional savings on a new bath, tub to shower conversion, walk-in bath, and kitchen upgrades. And we're going to put a great product in your home. Getting the new uh, windows put in the house, our house, our heating bill isn't as much. It's a lot warmer. These windows are sealed very tight and they keep all the bad weather out. You can count on Mad City Windows to do the job on time and on budget. And now you can take advantage of our 60-60-60 sale. 60% 60 off installation, 60 months zero interest senior military and previous customer discounts, $60 Walmart gift card with purchase. And if you call during this program, get a free $100 Amazon gift card with your estimate. Call 715-690-3085. Let me give you that number again. 715-690-3085. Welcome back. Aaron Rodgers, he's going to fill in as host next week. Starting next week, I'm very excited for that. That'll On be Jeopardy, not for us. I wish for us. That would be cool. Well, I would I be just, fine if I he replaced had me. vacation, though. I don't need a vacation again right now. That's true, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so tomorrow, we got an exciting show. We're not much of cooks or food makers. Speak for yourself. Okay, well, I'm going to try to make an acai bowl. I talked about it earlier this week. You're going to try to... Mojitos. You're going to make your famous mojitos. Yes. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow with that. See you then.